Hello, denizens of the internet. How do you like my new set? <laughs> well, it seems there actually are Ahsoka fans out there, and most of them, uh, it seems, hate me. I haven't seen this much vituperation since I reviewed Arcane, that whole lot of hot air animation. The League of Legends Diaper Squad came out for me big time. Anyways, the Ahsoka insults could be broken down into two categories. One, you are an old fart who is too old to appreciate, appreciate such youthful programming. And two, the show was made for fans of Clone Wars and Rebels, and I was stupid to not have watched them first. In between all those words, there were insults that I chose not to repeat here on my channel. But let's just say they were not uh, Oscar Wilde level sophistication. Yes, there were those who told me they loved the show, but ironically, that was not the gist of the complainers. So, here's the thing. I'm not entirely sure the complainers even watched my reviews, if they had. I'm fairly certain that their comprehension skills were lacking. First of all, I made it very clear that I had not seen Clone Wars or Rebels, and I would be reviewing the shows on their own merit. Would they both entertain and be accessible to those not familiar with Clone Wars? Not to piss off the animation fans, but a live TV show opens things up for a much bigger audience. It would make sense if the show made sense. I never did do a green light yes or no for Ahsoka, and frankly I'm glad I hadn't, because purely on the strength of the Star Wars brand I would have had a hard time not to. But we all know how degraded the Star Wars brand actually is. Yet, in the TV business, you never know whether it will take off or not. But based on the first two shows, I had concluded that there was no reason to watch this show about nothing where nothing happened, starring people who did nothing and acted bored. Using my former network executive persona, would I have greenlit the first show? Honestly, yeah, because the pressure to do so would have been huge to have not greenlit it, and be proven wrong later would have been detrimental to my career. So from a career perspective, and I have to remind you that that is the only thing that would have been important to me, saying yes would have been the safest decision. If it fails, I would just go, hey, it's Star Wars. Hey, a Star Wars expert Dave Filoni was helming it. Hey, it's based on a huge cartoon series. Hey, Ahsoka was popular on The Mandalorian. Hey, Hayden Christensen is making a return. Bada boom, bada bing. Seriously, as a network exec, would you be stupid enough not to go ahead with this? In many ways, there is no downside to your job saying yes. As I told you many videos ago, as a network exec, I only had one job, and that was to keep my job. I hope that assuages all those online meanies. Yes, I would have greenlit it, but the show still sucked monkey balls. And maybe rather than attacking me for being too old to appreciate the show, you might instead think, damn, he has a lot of experience. Perhaps he's right. But it seems that has not crossed your minds. Ageism, however, did. Getting back to having to go to Clone Wars night school before watching the show as the exec in charge of production, I probably would have sent a note to Mr. Filoni along the lines of, uh, uh would it be, uh, maybe a good idea to make the show, uh, in such a way that it didn't require previous knowledge, much like the first season of The Mandalorian, which was so great? For sure, I would have sent that note. And to all you Clone Wars historians, is your sum total enjoyment coming from seeing your silly little cartoon come to life, or would you have been happier knowing that far more people will love what you love so much? As it happens, that is exactly what is happening with One Piece. It's not just people who have not 
seen the anime or read the manga singing the praises of One Piece, but people who have never seen any kind of anime in their lives, well, they're going crazy over it. No one had to go to One Piece U before watching the series. Would that have really been too much to ask for for Ahsoka? No, of course not. So rather than ragging on me, go bug Filoni for a massive missed opportunity. As far as I'm concerned, every Star Wars TV show needed to follow the same formula. One, respect the fan base. <laughs> Two, try to stick with whatever shreds of canon remained. Three, write it as if the viewer had never seen or heard of Star Wars. Okay, now I'm hearing you say, no way, that's nuts. No, it's not nuts. It's creatively and corporately responsible. How the hell did the first Star Wars movie become so successful when no one had any prior knowledge? How the hell did they build those worlds without sending audiences homework prior to going to the theater to see the movie? Do you see how stupid your argument is? Good writers would have been able to do this for Obi-Wan and this piece of crap. Even the somnambulant Andor managed to do this, at least marginally. So, to you nasty little flying monkeys, I know you won't agree with me, but then again, you're idiots. I'm not too old to enjoy pop culture. I'm not too old to want to see good writing. I'm not too old to wish for a working Star Wars. I'd love to hear from you. I do not believe my positions are unreasonable, but you will tell me, I'm sure. Till next time, denizens. Be seeing you. Oh, would you uh, like a, a, a Corona? What, what else can I get you? Anything else? I don't have a cloth. I'm just faking this.